Okay, well, welcome to our TCM Hacks lecture. So what does that even mean? Anybody know what I mean by that? Who knows, right? It just sounded like an intriguing title and it would get you in here. So uh, traditional Chinese medicine uh, is the foundation of our Zen wellness program. Traditional Chinese medicine, otherwise known as TCM. So the theories and practice is really built on traditional Chinese medicine theory. And the hacks piece is more of a contemporary phrase, a way of getting around you know, conventional problems. And this lecture is going to attempt to summarize my experience in teaching Tai Chi and Qigong and using traditional Chinese medicine theory for over the last 30 years or so. And I'm hoping to basically encapsulate it so that you can quickly benefit. And so let's start with the beginning. There's basically one cause of disease and 10,000 expressions. It's really, really only, well, let's say there's really one disease in 10,000 expressions, which is an interesting uh, concept to think about. So what do I mean by this? Well, there's a, there's a few theories. So let's start off with the disease is called mortality. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. We all suffer the same disease. Now, how we respond to that disease, and this is the most important piece, is really based on your constitution. Okay, your genetics. Yeah. And so your constitution is going to have a lot to do with the way your body can coexist with the pathogenic factors, okay? So we have to start off with literally the starting point. Ayurvedic medicine or Vedic medicine, they would say dosha. Does anyone do yoga? So that'd be your dosha. Yeah, your constitution. So the beginning of the little journey really starts with knowing yourself. So when we start talking about your constitution, that's going to determine how you cope with life. Yeah, and the funny thing is, we all go through life and we never really figure out what our constitution is. So let's look at something, source of disease. There's generally three. And one is uh, exogenous pathogenic factor, the environment itself. Another one is your emotions, basically. And a third one is a chicken truck, okay? So which means you get hit by a truck, you fall off of a cliff, you know, a meteor hits you. Something like that. So there's like trauma, unforeseen trauma. But really, a lot of it has to do with the way you think, you know, your emotions. Your internal or yin disease actually comes from the way you cope with mentally and emotionally daily life. External pathogen has a lot to do with your constitution. So external pathogen would belong to the weather, you know, seasons. Uh, you know, flus, all kinds of stuff, externally trying to enter the body. That has to do with, okay, how strong is my Wei Qi field? How strong is my immune system? Internally, that's bubbling up from the inside out, and that has to do with how you cope with day-to-day -day life emotionally. Those are really the major. So when I deal with clients, those are really the major. Now, you can say the third one, you're hit by a chicken truck, as my teacher would say. We don't have chicken trucks. But, you know, he came from Korea. There's chicken trucks on the street. You can get hit by a big old chicken truck. So I get it. So, but whatever, that's more like what we call an accident. And maybe, you know, you can argue uh, karmically, well, maybe though, you know, accidents are really meant to be, who knows? So we'll talk about that in a whole other lecture as far as karma and accidents. But let's maybe agree, if we really want to boil this Thing called the human condition down to simple, just simple pictures right now. We can all agree that we all suffer the same disease, and that's called mortality. Yeah? How mortality expresses itself is going to be based on our constitution. Our constitution is going to determine how we cope with external or internal pathogenic factors. Okay? Sorry. It's okay. We'll wait for you to take the call. No, I'm kidding. So, so uh, what we do is uh, your phone should be off, but we call everybody just to make sure 
and then we bill you fifty dollars if your phone rings. So it's our fault. We're the ones that called you. No, I'm I'm kidding. So just just so you, no big deal. It happens all the time. Uh, so so really, we need to kind of look at this and maybe upgrade this. And a funny thing is, it'd be great if we were taught this in grammar school. You know, like basically, oh, by the way, this is your hardware. This is your software. This is how it works. We would save ourselves so much suffering. Now, there's paradigm shift, but there's this shift, especially in the Western culture, that your health care is the responsibility of somebody else, somebody wearing a white jacket, and they're going to take care of you. And so, uh, I don't know. You can say your finances are going to be taken care of by, uh, oh, you know what I need to do? Me. And what I want you to do is deposit your funds in my account, and I'm going to take care of you. I've got you covered. You're right. I'm better than a bank. Uh, so, so that's basically, I'm going to take a quick call. No, I'm not. I'm going to get rid of uh, this thing turning off. So sorry about that. I thought I had it under control, but I don't. Boom. Now I do. Okay. See that? I'm an expert. Okay. I thought I was. I don't. What? That's all right. That's what makes this fun. All right. I oh, know I'm going back. I'm going back in. Ha ha. All right. Good. Usually goes to like pictures of my son or something, which is cool. Okay. So that's good. So we have to look at then the concept of ownership. So I have, a, I'm a, what they call a doctor of oriental medicine and a master instructor of Taiji, Qigong, Bagua, Xingyi, all of this stuff. And that's all fine and dandy. But what I found early when I started to, you know, treating people, especially here in the West, was this uh, repulsive syndrome, which was entitlement. And so I got to the point where I didn't, I put you on the, you know, the table and I didn't want to treat you. I just wanted to choke you out. And I'm like, uh-oh, this isn't for me. This isn't for me. I had the wrong bedside manner because I would have this person who would do nothing about the quality of their life come to me suffering the same condition, which was, again, brought on by themselves, and somehow I've got ownership. It's like, you know, Doc, my head's killing me, and they're hitting themselves with a ball-peen hammer. As they're saying it, the, the, the cognitive dissidence made me pretty much quit, Okay. So I became, the motto is, uh, screw you, get your own chi. Okay, I put a little plaque on the wall and everything. And uh, because there's this, somehow, somebody is going to take care of your health. You're entitled to health care, when really you're not. You have to earn it. The quality of your health is the sum total of the decisions you've made throughout your life. Unfortunately, those decisions are the byproduct of the information you've been provided. So I know it's six of one, half dozen of the other. You're a victim of misinformation. Good. So then I, I thought about all this. You know, I would spend three months a year uh, going to this little island on Hawaii in solitude, do my meditation, 108 days, and have all of these thoughts. Did it for 15 years. It was great. I recommend doing it at least once if you can. And so I'm like, okay, this is pretty ugly. So what I can do then is teach them how to fish. Then entered in the... The, the actual protocol, the Zen Wellness Self-Care Solution is what hit me. It's like, all right, I'm going to show them then how to address the primary you know, concerns or the primary causes of their disease. And I'm going to take this baby and put it right back into their hands and see if they want to earn themselves out of it. Does that kind of make sense? Okay, problem with that. And I learned this too, because as I started the Zen wellness paradigm, and of course, it's also a business, you got to pay your bills. I hired a marketing company to help me get this message out, you know, so I can fill the room. Pretty high level marketing company, the same company that made some of the slogans for McDonald's. And I think it was $60,000 later, they came back to me and said, guess what? You are selling a jar of phlegm. <laughs> and that was it. That was their market analysis. And what does that mean? I'm sitting there you know, with a bill in my hand. And the point is, it's horrible. No one likes it. No one's going to drink a jar of phlegm. You're screwed. But what do you mean? Because you're telling people to take ownership for their own health. You're telling them to get, come through the door, stand, move, sit, maybe even sweat. Who's going to do that? 
you got a problem, sir. Your solution doesn't work for this culture. It's an entitled culture. So that was my, you know, that was inspiring. As I built my, you know, as I was building my plan, I'm like, okay, but I'm a very determined dude. And I'm like, well, screw it. I'll do it anyways. So here I am. So there's this thing happening again. It's like a collective cognitive dissidence where we won't accept this. So I started the Zen Wellness Self-Care Solution. And we, believe it or not, it's, it goes. It goes really, really well. Problem is, you know, there's a certain type of person. So it's not like a pill. So therefore, literally 75% of the market won't do it. They just won't. They are waiting for a pill. So that's kind of cool. So a big part of my job isn't just to like, okay, stand like this, now move like this. I have to sit here and educate you. I actually have to explain some of these theories and concepts to empower you and really give you that information you should have got when you were a kid. You know, in our culture, for some reason, we learn about our language, we learn about our history, we learn about everything but ourself. You know, how many vertebrae do you have? You know, it's like, what does the sympathetic or parasympathetic nervous system do? How do you get the, you know what I mean, the, the lymphatic system to activate? No one knows, and it's you. But you know all about your computer, you know all about your funds, you know all about your stuff, and you know nothing about you. And you pay for it with disease to the profit of others, by the way. But I won't get into my globalist conspiracy theories because you're not here for that. You know, we'll have a beer, we'll drink till three in the morning, and I'll carry on about my, my insane theories. Uh, so, okay, so let's go back now and really look at this. So, knowing yourself is really the first step. Knowing what about yourself is really your constitution. So, let's go back to the source of disease. Uh, again, internally, externally, and then maybe trauma. Okay, so we all respond differently, okay? And so I'll show you one of the books here. And here we go. We can just use this for now. Okay, so this graphic should do. So if you look at and really simplify life, we break down into about five different shapes. Mentally, physically, and emotionally. So what does this mean? There's fire people, as implied, they're very fiery. It affects, uh, their emotions will affect their heart, actually. Okay? There's earth people, as it applies, they're even kind of yellow. And they're kind of triangular shaped in the face and the body. They worry a lot. They work very hard. Oh, there's what they call metal people, pretty square in the face, actually. Uh, if they're going to have conditions, believe it or not, it's going to be in the lungs. They'll experience grief. They are really impeccable, like a reflection. They will show you what it is without negotiation. You know, there are water people. They tend to be rounder in the face and the body. They're pretty much dominated by fear. However, they have great willpower put in the right position. And it's usually endocrine system, kidney stuff, bone stuff that affects them if they're living in an unhealthy manner. There's wood people, really tall, thin people like a tree. And guess what? They tend to be yellowish green when they have jaundice and they'll have connective tissue issues and liver issues predominantly if their lifestyle is excessive or deficient in any way. That's it. And when you come into my room, I just see you immediately. Remember the Terminator and he had all that information in his head? I'm just looking at you. Before you get to my desk, I got it pretty much figured out after do it anything for decades. And that's just how it is. So you are all in a little suit momentarily. It's a, like a meat suit, the little space suit that you're wearing. You're not your body. You're experiencing your body. You're the consciousness momentarily residing in that body. You're not even your thoughts. You're just that which is aware of your thoughts. Your thoughts are kind of like this phone is you. And our technology is really amazing the way it mirrors uh, uh, reality as it is to so the phone. The iPhone 7 is the body. That's your body. I don't even know what the hell it is. It's an iPhone something. Uh, the software is your mind. Yeah? And when you get the phone, this is what you start off. And you can download different apps. We might call that an education. But you're not your phone. You're not the software. And you're not even the apps. You're actually the user. We identify, though, with our phone as us. Wait, we even, we're, we're even, we're from the West, so we're nuts. We even project who we are with our car, our house, our job, 
are stuff and it's so far from the truth. Okay, so we do this. We're already kind of nuts. We're disconnected. So you're not really the earth body or wood body or metal body. That just happens to be the vehicle you're in. You don't know this. So if you're the wood person, and whenever things, they say there's, a, you ever heard of a yin yang or yin and yang as we call it, right? Yin yang, yin yang is basically too much, too little. It, grossly simplified. There's actually five degrees of, uh, you know, uh, uh, yin yang expression, too much, too little opposite, but blah, blah, blah. But too much electric in that light bulb, which is chi, will blow it up. Bloom, right? A surge. Not enough electric in that light bulb, and it'll go, right? And it'll flicker. You are a bio light bulb. You are a high, high end device. Not made by Apple, but made by God, whoever God is to you, you know? So this device, if it has too much chi, biomagnetic electricity, will explode if there's too much of it running through. Will flicker if there isn't enough. It is that simple. So now traditional Chinese medicine, when I was introduced to it, this is, you know, first time I even started thinking about it was in the 70s. And then when I started studying it was 80. And it was almost like wizardry and witchcraft. You know, you had to have a wizard hat and a chicken in your hand. And, and so because Western science couldn't figure it out. Now we've done a really good job. Carillion photography, we've been able to uh, identify meridians, we've been able to... So now it's not. And it really lays nicely on top of quantum physics and all of the stuff. So it's like, okay, now we've got a matrix in which we can measure, which was before kind of magic. So this is good news for all of us. It'll be easier for us to kind of grok. And Western science is using it. As a matter of fact, physicians are being certified in the use of it, okay, which is awesome. And so so we're going to look at this as, guess what? The first thing you need to do is understand your equipment. So you have a physical propensity and you have a mental propensity. We can call it an elemental constitution. Yeah? So I have kind of a metal type earth constitution. So I'm boxy. You, you see it? So I'm not thin and wafty. I look more like a block than I look like a twig. Yeah, you see it? So right away, you're going to say, okay, that's metal. But if you look at my face, it's kind of long, but I actually have a wood face. So your software is going to be revealed in the shape of your face. Your hardware is going to be revealed in the shape of your body. So my mind is quick moving, really creative, and look what I do. You, you see, that's wood is about springtime, growth, creativity. So you can just look at a person like me and say a wood mind, metal body with a touch of earth. You know, nothing's perfectly even. You know, there, there's degrees of all of it. So then I already know where my issues are going to be physiologically. And so if I'm too much electric, too much chi, too much stress, it's going to express itself in my body. Too much mind movement, it's going to express itself in my particular case in the eyes and the gallbladder meridian because it all belongs to wood and oriental medicine. And I know it. Okay, it sounds like voodoo. It's not voodoo. So when you know your body and you know how your body is going to react to physical stress, because sometimes here's the fun part, you don't even know you're suffering physical stress. Like you're just doing it. And then bloop, you blow out. But your body will tell you. If you have an earth constitution, you're going to wind up with, the first step is uh, my grandmother would say agita, right? You'd wind up with acid indigestion. You'd be all, mm. Do that long enough, right? You'll wind up with ulcers. Do that long enough, chronically, for seven to years, you'll wind up with pancreatic cancer. Because it goes from a hollow organ, starts with a hollow organ within that system, in this case, earth, worrying, ooh, stomach, right? You'll worry yourself sick. They're right. Now worry yourself sick with this high-pressure nightmare job or relationship for a de seven years it takes for every cell in your body to basically duplicate, right, and become that disease. Then now it goes into the solid organ and you've got a tough, almost terminal condition. But you don't know, you're just too busy worrying every day. You don't even realize you're poisoning yourself and your body's saying, oh, the earth body is giving you the earth signal. There it is. Does this make any sense? So we don't know who we are and we just go into life. So if I were to say, okay guys, this is the Oprah show and underneath your chair is keys to a new Bentley. 
right? And you're like, Bentley, and I'm paying the taxes. Oh, what the hell? Well, you wouldn't just drive it around. You'd probably take care of it. You'd read the manual, right? So you can know how to cope with it and what's the right gas and what should I redline this? What do I do? So you'd be all concerned about the manual for your Bentley. But your body, which is irreplaceable and worth a gajillion Bentleys, you didn't even open the manual. So that is the insanity and delusion of the Western culture. So you got to know yourself first. So what we do here is we start the journey with, well, what kind of vehicle do you have is going to determine what the type of roads you can take, the type of environment you can take. Are you an SUV? Are you a Bentley? You know, that's going to tell us. And a lot of times we go through life, we don't self-identify correctly, right? And then what happens is you're applying this, you know, Bentley as an SUV and driving it off-road for years, and you wonder why it breaks apart immediately. And most of us do that. So the first thing I discovered is the client needs to know and take ownership for their constitution. So we do it on a Jing, Qi, and Shun level. Jing meaning your physical shape. Look, this is your shape. You're a fire body. How, how old are you? 92. Look at her though. She's fire of fire. 90, uh, little fire of fire women, they live forever. Uh, it's just, it's true. It's, I'm not shocked because that's how it is. You know, that's type of physical constitution. We've got a, a building full of them. It's, it's truly amazing. Do you see it? So you can kind of look at, there's a wood body right there, a, another wood body. And you can see it. And then I can already tell you your story just based on the equipment you're in. You know, but it's a metal face, wood of wood. Not you. You're kind of, I don't know, like an off shape of rubber, right? No, 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 no. I, I'm just, so that's kind of metal, actual metal. Yeah. And so you'd have to get up and have to do the whole thing. But usually I can just see, yeah? And then by the way you walk and stuff. And this isn't a parlor trick, you know? And your grandmother is behind you. I can see her. Or it's not like that. It's very, very practical, okay? And so our goal, the first step in your journey is to know what equipment you have. And so we take, we say, okay, this is your constitution. We look at it, you know, by your actual body shape. Then we say, oh, you know what? You have a nature. Now your nature is really going to be a little bit more sophisticated. Sure, it's going to be revealed by your face. But we also look at what the thing called your four pillars, year, month, day, and hour of birth. I know it sounds like voodoo, but believe it or not, where you're born and then the year, month, day, and hour is unique. And it's a unique imprinting. Yeah, so you can say, you know, Chinese astrology, Vedic astrology, whatever you want to say, but rocks in space really do affect you. It makes the high tide the low tide. That's how they create the, uh, you know, Farmer's Almanac and all of that stuff. Rocks in space have an effect, and it's based on just basic Newtonian law. If you're in a pool, in a floaty with a martini, and I jump in, you're going to go like this. That's basic physics. And so when rocks in space are aligned to different places, they actually affect us. Call any ER on the full moon. And you'll see it. It's madness. So where the rocks are in space when you were born does determine a lot. Okay? Next, the season. So what do we hit? We got to look at three. We look at the time, the season, and the hour. So. The season of your life in this particular case, how old are you? From zero to eight, that's called the springtime. It's wood. It's kind of the formation of your ego and you're a little sprout and blah, blah, blah. And you can roll and flip and you're very pliable. From eight to 33 is called the early summer. That's the flowering, the fire. Look at me. You know, I'm so sexy. This is what I'm going to be, right? That's when you really got it going on. From 33 to 58 is called the fruition, late summer, earth. That's when all things mundane, earthly, must be put into order. Education, you know, career, family, house, portfolio, and stuff. That's actually where we do the most damage, by the way, to ourself. We blow ourselves out during this period. From 58 to 83 is called the fall, obviously. And that is the metal period of life. It could be gold or it can be lead. Really depends. In metal and oriental medicine belongs to uh, your lungs and your colon, large intestine. Those are things in which we remove waste. 70% of the waste is actually removed through your lungs via the 
lymphatic system. So really during this period of life, everything that isn't you and doesn't serve you has to be cut off. Or that's what kills you. That's why most of us die before 83. Because we don't let it go. You, it's kind of like you just left it in there and you're constipated emotionally. <laughs> and it's these habits, usually your story and usually all your woundings and all the crazy crap you did to yourself up until 58. You pay for your sins at 58. That's what it is. And so the work is, how do I know? Because I'm the guy fixing the sins. You, you see, I just see it and I see it and I see it. So from 58 to 83 is the alchemist, they call it, as far as like each one has a season. The alchemist is the one who alchemically has to turn this base metal into gold. And that means you need to put heat and pressure, right? If you were like making a sword and then all of the impure comes and you remove the impurities. The heat and the pressure is actually the practicing, the cauldron. So this is really the power time of your life when you're supposed to seize all this life experience, right? And let go of the waste or it poisons you. Very important piece. You'll see now you, this group, are the minority. You're the 10%. You're the mutants. You're listening. You're shaking your head. Hmm, you're kind of getting it. No one gets this. No one will even show up to hear it because there is a smack, you know, of ownership. It's, you know, it's like, who wants to know? I'd rather be a victim. And so by virtue of the fact that you're already listening to it, the possibility of letting go of the waste is goes way up because there's a receptivity there. Very important piece to understand. So this period of time is really important as far as uh, the culmination of everything that happened before. Now I'm going to get really heavy on you here because from 83 to 108 is the sage. And the sage is uh, gone. The sage is the wise elderly person that actually each one of these is an element and that one happens to be water. This is the most important element for the children. The next element. The traditional Chinese medicine theory, you know, goes like that. So fire creates the earth, which is the yellow one. The earth, you dig up metal. Metal you can melt into a liquid, which is kind of water. Water can be feeding all things wood, then wood feeds fire. It's a cycle. And in our society, the way we create over and over again, the same ignorance, and we re generation after generation, we fall for the same tricks and we suffer the same unconsciousness is because that link in the chain is broken. Each generation starts over again. That child is not being properly seated by the wise elders because the wise elders blew themselves out in the 60s. You, you see what I'm saying? Paid for their sins, and now they're gone. They're not inspired. You're going to be what? An example or a warning? That's it. And so really, it's about paying forward and making sure the green, the children, the sprout, doesn't repeat all of the insanity you did. So that's called the collective evolution of the species. And if you look at our culture as we grow exponentially, you know, we look at our, our species, you know, what was it? World War II, there were 2 billion. 2 billion, now there's 7 billion. Oops. And guess what? Most of us are completely unconscious. So we're not exactly adding value. So we're just giving birth to generation after generation of unconscious beings. It's, it's, and whose fault is it? Yours and mine. So the real work is know yourself so that then you can stand in your power and change the next generation so that you already suffered. They should stand on your shoulders, not have to start over again. But we always do memory swipe, start again. Memory swipe, start again. If you look at families and dynasties that actually accumulate wealth and power, they don't do that. They make sure that that next generation is properly trained. And they make sure they don't start over again. And so we have an obligation to do that. Well, that's why I'm here. So that A, okay, how can you do it? Well, one thing is your example. Once you seize your power. Well, I was lucky enough when I started training, my teachers, you know, in their 70s, 80s, you know, they, they were powerful. I was a teenager. And if you bumped into one of them, you'll hit the ground. 
So my definition of what strong was, was changed. It wasn't strong like strong, let's do 50 push-ups. It was strong like, wow, standing like a mountain, moving like a river, and having this unshakable wisdom. Then that was cool. So my North Star got changed to this freakish, wow, look at that. That looks better than everything I'm seeing over here. This doesn't look happy and inspiring. I'm just going to be some blown out fat Italian guy. You, you see it? So by just them being there gave me the inspiration. You, sometimes you don't have to say a word. Just by the way you walk through the room, stand like a mountain, move like a river in your power and with your grace. It, it, it shifts. That's also starting to show uh, real wealth. You, you can have a Bentley, but if it takes you 20 minutes to get out of it, who gives a crap? Right? I mean, at a certain point, it's not what you have. It's what you can enjoy. And so, you know, uh, so these are some of the things we have to kind of go all the way back to treat, to hack these common disease really is cutting off the roots, not dealing with the little leaves, the fruition of the disease. No, we want to get to the root of the disease, which is ultimately and unfortunately ignorance. Ignorance about the, the way is the knowing, as they say, Tao, you know, knowing the just so. So if you can understand, A, yourself, your actual constitution, hey man, I'm in a wood body, I have to watch out for my liver, I have to watch out for my joints, I have to, you know, these are the things that are going to show me if things are too much or too little in my life. Oh, I'm metal. I better look out with my lungs. Oh, I better watch my bowel movements, believe it or not. It's going to express itself in my skin. Oh, I'm fire. And if you kind of know, that can save you. It'll also help you uh, more effective with your lifestyle, how you eat, think, and move. It's very important. So we say, okay, we have these seasons in life which determine appropriate behavior. Now, in the West, we were all there. I was there. Remember when working out became popular? Right? We all had leg warmers on and headbands and we were running the flash dance. It's like we always take a good thing and turn it into poison. Have you ever noticed that? So now we're all sexy with leggings. It's really, that's so lame. So our definition of really what health is, isn't even close. So, you know, I was taught my... Teachers who talk about Dung Han Taoist, Korean, and Chinese culture, they, their definition of working out is much different. They have 2,000-year-old workout plans. They've had generations live and die, live and die, live and die. They know what it's going to do. And it's not about, you know, pumping creatine and running on a mill and getting out. You know, you look great outside and you die of a heart attack. Oops. So we're, we're still learning as a culture that health matters. And we're like the first generation that really, really is considering it. So why start over again? The intellectual property is there. Yeah, now when I was taught the intellectual property, there was no thing called the internet. So if you wanted to learn it, you know, you'd have to have to find a guru, you know, put on a robe and sit there and learn it. Totally, you know, give yourself away for the information. Nowadays, you can get the information. So now my job is to take that information and create a context in which you can apply it, because the contents is everywhere. So the season of your life is a very important piece that we have to look at, because that's going to tell you what workout is appropriate. Fire workout is great for 18 to 33. But you show me a man that runs every day over the age of 50, I'm going to show you a man who's got destroyed joints that will turn to a stone by the time they hit 80. It's just not what you do. We think you should run. You shouldn't, unless there's a tiger behind you, okay? So cardio is great during the fire period, you know? So what happens is we'll get this antiquated, kind of half-baked workout plan, and we'll do it. And you know what? For the first six months, it'll actually benefit you, and then it'll turn to poison. And that's why people always change their workouts, and they change their diet, because they don't know. They're picking jackets off of a rack, and they never took their measurement. So it's a very important piece to understand your constitution, understand your period, where you are in life, okay? So it's all about time and timing. Really, it's about what we call a journey around the sun. It's really what it is. How many journeys? That determines what season you're in. 
that determines what's going to go on with your body and your mind and what will be the appropriate diet and exercise and lifestyle. That's really what it is. There is basically three clocks, okay? The time of your life. That's what we just talked about. Zero to eight, eight to 33, 33 to 58, 58 to 83, 83 to 108. Boom, that's the big gear. Whoosh, that's yours. But then there's the season of the year. Do you know that each season, your body is affected differently? So it's the springtime. So you're going to start with your allergies, depending upon your constitution. And your eyes, this, this will metal people, it'll be here. And wood people, it'll be here. And, and it'll be distended. And how your body is going to respond to the season. Your body has to basically coexist with each season. So if you don't know that, you're doing the same behavior. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So what we do is we train based on five seasons, 10 weeks apiece. Okay, that gives you 50 weeks. We take two weeks off for cigarettes and donuts. No. But, you, but you, you get the point. And so each season, so now right, we're in like week three of the spring training protocol. We're really working on our connective tissue. We're really working on fortifying our gallbladder and liver. We're really working on the winter, it was all going inward, seated meditation, tranquility, and all of this. Now we got to move. But if you go from this to that, you rip yourself apart the older you get. You try to get active in the springtime, you hurt yourself. Yeah, I'm going to join the you know, soccer team you know, or the softball team. You know, and then you're, you're trying to run around second, you blow your hamstring out. No, you have to moisten and prepare all the connective tissue Everything that belongs to that wood element and that's affected by that season. You don't know, so you just go. Each season, your body is going to be affected different. Then we'll move into fire. Now, fire, if you're going to be like active and really get that heart rate up, it's going to be, this is the safest time to do it in the early summer. You run the least risk of injury. Late summer is the best time to build muscle mass. Once a year for 10 weeks, you should concentrate on putting muscle mass on. Why? Because the older we get, our, our BMI shifts. So even if you're still 190 pounds, yeah, I know, but you know, 30% of it's fat. You, you, you see what I'm saying? So it's like, but if you spent all year working on your muscle mass, you'd actually pull your connective tissue apart and misalign your, your joints and damage yourself. So it's like lifting weights every day all year after, I believe after 40 or so, is a mistake. But you have to do it once a year for 10 weeks. That's how you lay the muscle mass on. Then we focus on all things in the fall for your lungs. Breath work, regulating your breath, becoming much more, more uh, uh, let's say, efficient in your breathing. All things metal. Then in the winter, believe it or not, is when we work on our bones. The bones are affected in the winter. Bone density is a big one. Bone density and seated meditation, tranquility. And this is the tranquility actually affects your uh, endocrine system, which affects your adrenals, which affects your thyroid, your thymus, all of these things. Because until you learn how to turn off the blender in your head, you're dumping stress hormones or death hormones all day. So we, every year you go through and you work on these different systems in your body. And that's basically our approach to, you know, the, the journey around the sun, but wait, there's more. Then there's, so there's the time of your life, the season of the year, right? But then there's a time of day. What? That's right. Different times during the day, your body is affected differently. So right now we're moving into small intestine. That's what the little clock is there for. Did you know that? So, okay, let's think about this. In the morning, right, it's stomach and spleen are active from 7 to 11 a.m. It's the most effective time to eat breakfast and really nail that. It's also yellow, stomach, spleen. So you'll notice most breakfast food, yellow. Name one. Yellow. Yellow. Oatmeal. Yellow. Toast. Yellow. It's, I don't know why. It's so right there in our face. It's also the easiest time to acquire information. You know, you're not supposed to think and acquire information after 11. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of time. And you're like, what the hell? No, for real. Uh, reading contracts, doing all that. Because from 11 forward, you should be activating. You should be doing it. 
then you because you could drop into a, you know paralysis through analysis. So if you say, look, I got to figure this out, and my cognitive skills are diminishing, and I can't remember what I used to remember. All right, don't worry about it. Practice during stomach spleen time. This is when you try to remember things. This is when you develop that. Use timing on your side. And you'll be surprised the results you'll get. So uh, you shouldn't be up after 11 at night. That's when your liver, gallbladder has to do all of the processing. Remember the 60s when you're up partying till two in the morning? You did a lot of damage to your body. You see, so there's all, I know you're all looking around. Studio 54, I was there. So, you know, so we don't know. We just are like unconscious users of our bio, uh, you know, soft and hardware. So what we try to teach you is how to use the, literally the time of day to your advantage. Right action at the right time. Then we try to choose, hey, the time of year. Right action at the right time. Then we try to tell you, hey, your period, your time of life. Right action, right time. That's called coexisting. And if you can coexist with nature, see, it's the Tao, right? Nature. So that which coexists with nature is sustained by nature. That which does not is simply consumed by nature. Nature doesn't care, and nature always wins. So, you know, your arms are too short to box with God kind of thing. Okay, so you want to you wanna go with the flow. Very important piece. So what I have found, the most important medicine, is really kind of showing you this. Because then that kind of shifts you and actually empowers you to actively participate in your process. Okay? And I have one more question for you. Is it warm enough in here? <laughs> okay. I'll be back in an hour. I'm going to go ahead and get something cool to drink. Okay, so how are we doing? So that was, was that enough information? Yeah. I know, it's just ridiculous, isn't it? So, so before I go on and get to the real stuff, what you, would you, you know, put it in reverse, drive by, I turn the air on, okay? So it should be getting better in here. Uh, drive by, answer any questions, follow up, clarify, simplify. Anything? This is an interactive live audience. Not... It's clear to you, so you think it's clear. Okay, anybody else? Is there anything you'd like me to expound upon or clarify before I go into some more? This is just, yes, ma'am. What are you? You're, you're uh, well, from what I can see, that's a, actually a bit of a metal face and probably not so much a metal body, maybe a fire body. Okay, if you're looking at Constitution, that's what you have. Yes, sir. You're wood. wood, wood and wood again. <laughs> yeah, and yes, ma'am. Oh, you guys, yeah. Oh no, now we're gonna go into that. So this a metal face, fire body. Yes. Has the curriculum been written anywhere for the kids? That's a great question. Yes, it has. So this is what we do. I'm a part of an organization, a master's council. You can look it up on umareg.com. Thousands of black belts. I'm, a, I'm one of the grand master, chief masters in the operation. And it goes warrior, scholar, sage. So warrior phase is from eight, okay, to about 33. And that's when we teach martial arts. And that's how, because I can't teach a child oriental medicine theory. Do you see it? Right? I just can't. But I, if you ask my four-year-old, what is fire? And he'll say, back fist, dad. What is water? Oh, drilling fist, dad. What is metal? Oh, splitting fist, dad. Oh, what's the animal? Oh, that would be crane. He knows. He's four. So we teach them all of the system in the martial arts and kung fu, five animal kung fu. And I take that and I just put a little tiger on the red one. You see it? So you, you put different animals, a snake, a crane, a dragon, and a leopard. They just learned that. Leopard's about focus, right, Dad? That's right. Tiger's about courage. That's correct. Superheroes have courage, right? Yes, Dad. And he's four, and he already knows it. He's got his little book. He says, come on, Dad, let's look at the elements. And he knows all the elements. He's not going to tell me heart meridian, 
but he will say it's a courageous tiger. And he will say it's a creative dragon. So we imprint him early, right away. And the first thing we teach him is black belt attitude because we're not teaching our children accountability. No, no, you look at me in the eyes, you say, sir, yes, sir. You stand up when you address me, especially when we're training. You ask to sit down when we're training. And we teach him what we call a black belt attitude. Thank you and please. All of this is important for the discipline because later I'm going to teach him how to basically kill a man in three blows. And if he doesn't have the discipline, I've created a big liability. So we first start off with, I have to teach you discipline. And we have them, stre they'll stand. This is the best ADD pill in the world. <laughs> I'm serious too, because you're burning the thrusting vessel. Sounds like a joke, but it's not. You're burning the Chong Mai, which is helping them focus their mind on one point. And they start shaking. And when they're shaking, their nervous system is developing. Because I know it's the thrusting vessel going from the perineum to the, uh, the top of the head. We start early, right away. And we are a nation of black belts. Our children are the warriors. Now the scholars, we start teaching them how to be teachers. So now you're dealing with the 30-year-olds, the 40, 50-year-olds, and we're teaching them now the medicine. So now what is fire? Oh, well, that's heart and small, small intestine, and that's uh -huh, same system. Now we just lay the matrix of energy on it. First was just the matrix of physical body on it, Jing matrix. Then the last is the sage, which is you. And that's 58 to 83. Now we start teaching you the philosophy and the wisdom as it applies to the season and the natural flow of nature. It's always been warrior, scholar, sage. You go into the temple at eight. That's what they would do. My lineage, they would find, I was lucky I was taken as an apprentice. I started at 16 and I was taken as a direct apprentice to my grandmaster at 21 and lived, that was 18 years. And so they just find and they, they train them from eight it's usually about 33, send them back to the village to take care of the village. Then they come back to the temple and die. And that's what that is. That big picture is a temple. That's a Huashan. That's in China. And you start off in the base, which is the monastery, and you learn all the stuff and the martial art. And then you go up. Oh, you learn the calligraphy. Then you go up. You learn the, the instrument, in this case, a woodwind. You know, then you go up. By the time you get to the very top, there's just hermit caves. And uh, the, the elders stay in the caves, and you go in these caves, they're beautiful. They're 20 stories, they're 20 feet high. And it's just all books and stuff, really cool stuff. And the guys from the seminary have to go up that 9,000-foot mountain and bring them their food and listen to them. And that's a perfect loop. And so now we don't do it like that because we're here. You know, we've got Walmart. So, but, <laughs> right, it's, right, but, but we can still make it work. So we do, we have our martial arts schools where we do the black belt attitude. And then we have our uh, medical Qigong instructor where we do the scholar and then the sage. You're in the sage group, the wellness. So it's still the same. My job was uh, the impossible task of taking this culture and translating it into English. So when I started this, what, it was that. You go to Asia, you get rid of all your stuff, you wear one of those big Taoist robes. You eat kimchi, you sleep on the floor. And my grandmaster would talk about it, and so many people are going to learn this. And I'm like, <coughs> bullshit. <laughs> it's like, what? I'm like, nothing. Nothing. Because my concern was, who's going to do this? Who here wants to sell all your crap and come live in an ashram, sleep on the floor, eat kimchi and rice for seven years? Come on, give me hands. Thank you. Right? Right? And I'm like thinking about this. How am I going to do this? You're out of your mind. And he's like, okay. I understand your job now, because you did it with, through my culture, is now to translate it for your culture. That's your job. That's your earning. So I'm going to take you in and teach you this stuff. And now you're going to turn around and speak and present it in their language and their way. These calls that earning. That's how you earn your place in our lineage. So that's been my job. And the rest of my generation, the council, is to kind of, all right, how are we going to do this? You know, because when I did it, I was, my dad, everybody, I was in a cult. As far as I was concerned, I was in a cult. What are you, in a damn cult? You're going to make a living in your pajamas? That's what you tell me. You're supposed to be a cop. My Chicago cop, my grandpa, my uncle, they're all cops. Everyone's a cop. And here I am, ohm, walking around. He used to call me Bruce Lee, and he tormented the hell out of me. You know what I mean? He's like, all right, Kwai Chain King, just come on over here. And so, but, you know, so 
So what we do, warrior, scholar, sage, and we do teach the children first black belt attitude, strength, discipline, physical fitness. We teach the middle age, the mechanics of chi, acupuncture, you know, the meridians, all that stuff. And then in your case, we teach this topic. Yeah, I think that's how we do it. Good question. Any other questions? Yes. If the face of one um, the face of one element in the body is another. Yes, element, Wood Lady. What do you look at for the physical constitution? Well, the face is going to tell me what the intellect is. So you have wood intellect. I'm pretty much. You're probably what under five five. You're not standing. How tall are you? Five five and a half. Pretty good. She was sitting. She was sitting, and so probably fire body. So fire wood. So fire body. I'm assuming moving is good for you. You have to move. You've got to move. Wood, uh, earth people want to sit. Earth people. And, 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 but we all, guess what? If we sit too much, no matter what, deconstitution, you turn into water and earth, mud. You do. So you can be metal. You can be fire. You can be wood, but you can turn into mud. Yeah, so that's the good news. Yes? I love what I'm hearing, and uh, but at the same time, I may have been one of those people who said, my body that's right. Well, you're, you, you, yeah, well, you're screwed though. No, 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 yes. No, so, right? no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. So, so the first step is, uh, the question is, Hey, I'm, I'm here. I get it. But guess what? I probably did a lot of damage during that earth phase. What do I do now? Well, by the virtue of the fact that your aunt's asking the question is already part of the cure. Because the change starts here, and it's expressed there. You might not be able to go through restoration. I might not be able to bring you back to the warrior. Do you see it? Warrior, scholar, sage. I'm lucky. I can do all the warrior stuff. Those of you that know me know it. I can do all the crazy stuff. You know? Okay. But some of you aren't going to be able to do warrior. But you can do scholar, and you can do sage, and we can do restoration. Now, the average person is seven years older biologically than they are chronologically. So our first step is just to make a 60-year-old a 60-year-old. You see it now? In theory, though, the body is designed to operate at biologically 45 years of age until death in order to deal with uh, the natural world of predators and you know the stress of gathering and hunting. There aren't any, you know what I mean, handicap parking or anything in the nature you just become food and so you know okay but reversing it to the point where at least you can balance yourself out and maximize your physical potential truly identify oh wow yeah okay i've got this because i've got people that have all kinds of physical issues and they go through the whole cur curriculum you know based on their ability now that's an important piece because when i first started this I couldn't help you because all of my students were me. You know, when I first started with my grandmaster being an apprentice and I'm going through it, now you get to teach at the center and all. And he came to look at my center. How are you doing? And it was a room full of hairy Italian guys, you know, in their 20s. They all looked like me. They had way too many vowels in their name. And he was like, okay, you're not qualified. I'm like, well, what do you mean? He says, this is all you. What do you mean? That's not qualified at all. You're favoring yourself. A true master can make the tall short and the short tall. You should have young. You should have old. You should have male. You should have female. You should have tall. You should have short. I couldn't. I could only understand one body type. A beginning teacher, you know. But everybody should fit. The tall should fit. The short should fit. So if the desire is there, you'll find your layer. Now, you can reverse a lot of biological aging. And that we're going to talk about how to, you know, for the last part of this. So, yes, but you might not be able to do double broadsword with a backflip. But you can do the main pieces of the scholarly part and definitely the sage. Warrior, I don't know if I'm going to get you in a cage. You're probably not going to be a champion. So you, you're going to have to say goodbye to that. Who cares? You know what I mean? I mean, I could go in the cage, right? But I'd destroy myself. I'd be a fool. You know, I'm, I'm old enough to know. I don't know how many of you have had, you know, been knocked out and had your nose busted and spit out teeth and broke. I did it for years. That is not sustainable. It is not an old, it's not an old man's game.
So you have to know, you know, when to put your cards down and get the hell out. And so you, you're never going to do it and you don't want to do it. But can you do Tai Chi and Qigong and can you? Okay, here's the real goal for all of us is to be able to be stable. Really, I mean, to stand, to truly stand, to be mobile and be graceful. That's it. Now, that's it. And you can all do it because I do this. Now, how do we do it? So let's go into that phase, okay? How do we do it? It's really about addressing, has anybody heard of this book? It's an easy read. It's called the I Ching. I Ching? Uh, I, I Ching, the Book of Changes? No? Uh, yeah, the Book of Changes, the 64 images. Uh, Tao Te Ching, maybe that one? No? Okay. So, okay, the I Ching is a great book. Okay, I-C-H-I-N-G. Okay, I really recommend it. No one's ever seen it, huh? I have it. Yeah, you have it. I can't understand. Neither can I. I didn't say you have to understand it. You just have to have it. Uh, yeah. You know, oh, by the way, the most powerful medicine is a sense of humor. A child will laugh 300 times a day. An adult, maybe three. No, for real. So uh, you got to keep your sense of humor. That's why... You know, this unfortunately is a very, very, uh, this is book, the I Ching, this is one of them. The Book of Changes, and it's based on uh, this principle, 64 images of the Bagua, Feng Shui, anybody? Binary code, uh, the universe, okay. So um, in this book, very old book, they talk about uh, some very profound topics. And so let's go and look at this. So when I started this paradigm, I went up that mountain, all right, Huashan, and I hung out with the abbots in these different little monastery, Chinkaping and all these different things. And I said, hey, guess what? I've done this. This is where I'm at. This is good stuff. I am going now to start teaching the senior citizens in the Western culture, you know, and there's a long story behind how that happened and uh, to my horror. And um, what would you do? Here's my curriculum. This is what I put together. This is what I'm thinking. And they all, and I went to all these, they all told me the same answer. And the answer was, fire falls and water rises. They always answer with a riddle. Because they figure, if you know the riddle, you know the code, you're worthy of the answer. If not, get off my mountain. That's really how they play it. But if I was initiated and I was really part of a lineage, I'd say, yes, thank you. I understand completely. And what did he tell me? He told me that that is a 63rd of 64 images of the I Ching. What does that even mean? So that's a human condition. Okay. Or you can say metal floats and wood sinks. These are all right. And if you know it, you'd be like, thank you. Wow. I get it. I understand that principle applies here. If you don't understand that, now those of you that train, you know, right? You already know the answer because I taught it to you. Yeah, and this is the key piece. So let's look at the human condition. Look at my son. Yeah, so his face, he drools. He's moist, right? He's all blah, 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 blah. But he's a little dude. But his belly is really hot, and it goes up and down. His moist mouth, glowing eyes, and little pink puffed up feet, and... Plumpy little belly, hot, hot, hot. That is youth. When we get old, we get cold and damp in our feet, edemic. Our guts slow down. Our head gets hot. Our mouth gets dry. Our heart beats quickly. That's fire rising, stroke, heart attack, all kinds of horrible stuff. You know, uh, the, the genital brain, all, all the stuff, inflammation of the brain, all of, uh, I go on and on and on. If you look at Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and you go, 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 it's all rising fire. Fire, 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 fire above. Then this is all uh, neuropathy, edema. Oh, I go on and on and on. Reproductive, digestive, elimination, all this damp, cold phlegm bleh, drops. Puffy ankles, Ugh. distended head, bulging eyes, ringing ears, 
that's all rising fire. That's called old age. If you want to fix it, get the feet warm, get the belly warm, get the head cool and the moist mouth or the mouth moist, whatever you want to say. That is rising water, falling fire. That is the answer. So when you look at people and they're just standing on line at the bank, it's like, oh God, oh no. A, never breathe out of your mouth unless you're singing, okay? Or playing an instrument, a woodwind or something. Only breathe out of your nose. That uh, dehydrates your brain, dehydrates your throat, heats up your head. Moreover, your tongue is just all, why would you do that to yourself? Put your tongue on the roof of the mouth and shut your mouth. And every time you inhale, touch the roof of your mouth. And every time you exhale, drop the tongue. You'll salivate. Water rising. That saliva is going to be swallowed. There's no food. Great. Those digestive enzymes will keep your metabolism moving. Want to lose weight? S swallow your spit all day. Really? Yes. <laughs> but you don't. You sit there all <laughs> with a big white puffy tongue and a hot head. So that's called fire rising. And I see it all me all I, everywhere I look. I'm like, oh, ow, oh, I, it's like a slow motion train wreck, especially here in Sun City. It's like, oh, I just look down and walk straight ahead, because it's 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 tough, and you care, so you want to fix it, you know. So, you, but you shut up, you just shut up. So that is the first thing I know. You want to fix it? Make get your feet warm every damn day, every day. Get your belly warm every day. Get your mouth. Moist every day, hands pink. We must get the blood to the extremities. This is what we do. So the whole golden sheet gong protocol, everything that I teach you is about activating and getting this energy. As we age, the energy goes like this, and then shh, and out. That's what happens. It's not here, it's all. Up here, shallow chest breathing. Right before you die, you're just going to go, and that's it. You're done. So, and watch someone die. That's how they die. It leaves. You got to get that ball of life right here below your belly button, mindfully every day. And what we do is bring that ball of life below your belly button. We call it the golden chi ball, right where it belongs every day. That's the most important piece because now you're heating up your guts. You're warming up. See, the blood. Um, Chi is a, kind of a generic term for oxygen in blood and nutrients within that blood. That's all it is, chi. So where blood flows, chi goes. So, but what happens is the blood pools here. Turbid fluid drops in the blood pools and it doesn't get to your extremities. So death begins in your extremities. So everything we do is about getting the blood to the tips of the fingers and toes every day. Warming up your guts and getting the blood to the tips of the fingers and toes every day. That has a profound effect. Now, when we start moving the spine, something magic happens. All right? So your spinal column, everything I do moves, everything, all of our movement is moving the spine. Constantly moving the spine. Constantly. When I move that spinal column, it basically palpates the spinal cord, which propels cerebral spinal fluid up into the brain. Now that's supposed, you know, it's passive. You know, I know, but you, it's like, it's, you have to do it. Just like the limb system, you have to do it. It's just, or it's just gonna sit there. So your, every vertebrae has to move every day, every way. Now, when that goes, whoosh, Oh, man, now you're bathing the brain. Your brain sits in your skull like a puffy, hot cotton ball for decades. When you sleep, it's supposed to reduce in size by 10%. It doesn't. It just stays like that. So by regulating your breath and moving your spine, this literally size of your brain decreases. And you can enjoy this thing here that we do in Zen Wellness. It's called brainwashing. Is that they actually called it muscle tendon brainwashing, but I'm like, I can't call it that, you know, and it comes with a free glass of Kool Aid, so no brainwashing, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's like, guys, is that you can't sell that? So, but by regulating the breath, 
you're going to really start to have an effect on the chemicals you're dumping. The specific death hormone in this case is cortisol, which creates inflammation. We regulate the breath. We decrease the size of the brain. We basically move the spinal cord, you know, propel the cerebral spinal fluid, bathe the brain. Nice. That's water. What we call that is the water part. The fire part, back to fire and water, pink hands, pink feet. Mixing, con and lee, fire and water. Every day. That's alchemy, according to them. So whether you're, you know, a young athlete or someone who's, on, you know, had some physical challenges throughout life, doesn't matter, it'll affect you. Because really, the goal isn't to become a great wushu athlete. The goal is to be able to move gracefully and powerfully throughout your life every day and then die. <laughs> For real. That's called dying well. All my teachers lived every day until they died so far. They taught, they taught, they taught, sat down and died. That's awesome. All of them so far. All of them. They called their pocket, if you will. They knew it. And so that to us, we watch how the grand, how the masters die. You know, and so they don't die, they leave. And so that's really, you know, living again, being that awesome elderly example. How did he go? Not how did he live, how did he die? You know, very important piece. And so the what we work on is the restoration of that system of fire and water. Getting the fire to drop where it belongs, right here. A nice warm gut. So you can basically digest. You can assimilate your nutrients, right? You can actually fortify the body. Then all of this is moist. You know, getting your hands pink. How, you know, how much blood can you get to those extremities? All the work we do is for that. Then you can stand like a mountain, move like a river, and have that grace. As we age, we start to ratchet. So even if you don't get great at this, I have an army of people that are horrible at it. I never tell them that, by the way. <laughs> Thank God they're not here. But they're just the worst. But, but who cares? You know, I train, you know, fighters. I train the military. I train people to do great in tournaments. I did all that. You know, but they didn't benefit anyone. You, you see, if you can seize your power, you'll benefit a generation by being something they want to be. We hide our elders because there's nothing sexy about them. It's, it's true. We are in that culture. If you can't get on the stage and twerk, we don't want to see you. Right? It's just disgusting. Isn't it us? It is us. Admit it. So it's not like we cherish the wisdom of the elders. We're like, damn it, they're stealing all the sugar at Luby's. Get them out of here. <laughs> right? It's true. And so it, that has to change. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm no kid. I get it. But, you know, I, I, how you move and how you stand and how you go through the world has a huge impact on the psyche of the generation before you. And that's the sage. Yes. Mm. That no big shot anywhere in this country mm. has been able to this point. It's very difficult to move and walk because you're not stable. Yep. What would you say? Three things. Well, number one, firstly, I'm sorry to hear that. Okay. It's a water issue, by the way. Okay. <laughs> We're dealing with middle ear. It's a water issue. Okay. Just so you know, it's a water issue. Okay. Mm -hmm. I know that, but we're not, uh, I'm not looking at it from Western physiology. I'm saying it's a water issue, okay? So, but that's cool. Doesn't matter. You're not dead yet. You have to move. Okay. So, first step is sit. Seated meditation daily. Regulating your thoughts. Basically, dropping into no thoughts is your number one responsibility. Number two, stand. And I'm saying actively stand. If you can't move, great. Can you stand like this for 30 minutes a day? Sure you can. Probably not today, but start. You have no excuse. Stand. Regulate your breath and stand. And I promise you, if you meditated every day for 30 minutes, which would be about 118, you know, 108 breaths, mindful breaths, four seconds in, four seconds out, take about 28 minutes, and then uh, stood for a half hour every day. It'll take you time to get there. You'll be able to move. And even if you're dizzy, you'll still be able to move because you'll be stable. And let's say you don't and you fail. 
you still dropped into tranquility from seated meditation and you still actively stimulated what they call the thrusting vessel in their nervous system. You still increase the quality of your life without moving. So if you can't move, so what? Sit and stand. No excuse. And that, that's, that's what, if God forbid, if that's what I had to deal with, or you were my mother and you asked me, which Italian mothers will never ask their son, by the way. So, you know, so I just pretend you're my mother so I can get like some of that energy out because it makes me nuts. And so that's what I would do, mom. <laughs> now she won't listen. <laughs> Damn it. So, well, I, I, I would have to say you're probably, uh, you know, not moving a lot, but uh, how tall are you? Yeah, so you, it's possible metal with maybe metal face, possibly. But again, we turn to water and earth, which is kind of mud, if we drop out. So it's almost like hides behind it. So then I have to really look, if that makes any sense. So the more balanced the body is, the quicker it reveals its elemental constitution. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Oh, you have a metal face. I think you might have an earth body. I haven't seen you stand up, but maybe. Metal face, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, you're fire, oh, fire face with the earth body. Yep, yep. Yes, ma'am. Why, because I said so. <laughs> what the hell? Why should we read the, she had the audacity to ask. Oh, you shouldn't. Most of us, the I Ching is a big problem because we think it's an oracle. We use it as an oracle. Ooh, should I marry him? Oh, should I buy that car? You're not qualified, and all you'll do is destroy your life. So you first need to actually understand how to build that image right there. Anybody in my group that reads the I Ching, got to give them a piece of paper and a pencil, and they can build that image, right? They can. Then they have to be able to translate and interpret pre-heaven, post-heaven, nine gates, blah, 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 reviews, you know, a reflecting view. Then they have to be able to sit, stand, and move, and re then they can read it. And, but why would you want to read it? It's 4,000 years. We got talking talking about the no water to feed the wood, no wisdom of the elders. So let's just pretend you had an uncle that was 4,000 years old. I'm just saying. Would you ask him advice? Damn right you would. So this is about preserving the wisdom of humanity. And there's 64 phases that we go through in life, no matter who you are. Some of us are unconscious. That's why these lines, bottom three are, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. I'm just stumbling through. The top one are, I have a sage, you know, our emperor's knowledge. So it's a way of consulting the wisdom of the sage and maintaining connection to the generations before us. You ever hear of a guy named Confucius? He, he, he did a lot of commentary work on this as well. So these are, you know, preserving the human intelligence so that you can bring it to bear on your daily life and not have to start over and over and over again. That's why we use it. Does that help? Yeah. Yes, sir. If new learning depends on memory, what do you do about memory? Well, what do you do about memory? Work your brain. No, for, 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 for real. So we, we, yeah, okay, first thing we do is you remember uh, first, we got to oxygenate the brain. First, we got to uh, make sure that the you know you're moving the uh, wiring it right and left side first. So creating neurogenesis, moving the right and left side simultaneously in opposite directions, creating a thunderstorm in your head. That's the first step. Before we even start trying to load new software in it, we have to refurbish it. So the first thing we take you through is restorative process. Is that upper and lower body simultaneously in opposite directions? Number one. Then we say, okay. We're going to get you to remember, but not with your brain, but with your body. And we're going to use muscle memory. So I'm going to teach you everything I do. is 108 times I'll show it to you, just so that you can start to mimic it. Okay? After 1,000 times, you'll see what's coming. And after 10,000 times, you'll become it. It'll actually become you. Then we do a thing called the Shen Gong training. So we teach you complex patterns, movements. Roll back. You've seen it all. All these patterns. Now you go to bed and you train your mind. And you do all these movements in great clarity and detail as you're falling asleep. Every day. Which is preparing you for death. That's what you should do during your dying moments. As opposed to desperately thinking, oh shit, I'm dying. So you have to prepare yourself to die in tranquility. Because you don't die and go to hell. You bring hell with you. 
So you have to control your mind when it leaves the body. So we start now. It's bigger than memory. So yeah, that's how we do it. And so I remember hundreds of forms, but I have no idea where I put my keys. And I don't really give a shit, you know, because that's a detail. So there's different levels of memory too. Everyone thinks I'm like an idiot sage because I can't remember anything, but I can remember everything if that makes any sense. So we have to understand which memory counts and what's junk. So I hope that kind of helps. So yeah. Any other questions? Okay, so let me do a quick summary. All right, so here's the summary. At the bottom line is this is what we have found. The journey around the sun is the answer because it's not just about information, it's about a experience. It's not about learning this, it's about becoming it. And in the West, we want to learn, take a test and move on. It's not going to be this. You cannot learn to be healthy. You have to earn to be healthy. So by going through this journey around the sun, what we have found is that with each season, going back to your memory concern, is we live each season and all the teachings within the season. So in the winter, we think about all things winter, seated meditation, bone density, endocrine system, kidneys, bladder, the color blue, salty food, all the things that belong to winter is all we think about. We're not even worried about anything else. Then we move into spring. Okay, it's time to move. We are going to move in accordance with nature. So spring, let's do it. Green, sprouting, everything that we do, connective tissue, the liver, the gallbladder, the eyes, all of the things that are really affected by spring, we work on. And that's all we worry about. Then the summer, heart, small intestine, the vascular system, a little bit of cardio, the color red, bitter things, you know what I mean? Like burnt and all the, uh, the, the direction south, all of the studies and all of the, basically nature has something to teach you each season. Classes in session each season. So we get you to start to look at the root power of nature's wisdom each season. Oh, then here comes late summer, the fruition. You know, muscle mass and all things belonging to late summer, sweet and everything. Then we look at fall, metal, all things metal. Let's work on your lungs. Let's work on, so we do it year after year. The first year is just kind of introducing you to all of this stuff nature has been trying to tell you your whole life and you never saw. And the cool thing about nature is it's consistent. Man is random. Nature is like a Swiss watch. Now, people that don't understand nature go into nature and they think, oh my God, this is chaos. It's not chaos. If there's, I have an ashram up in the mountains by the hot springs. I live, you know, I lived there for four years. And if there's a lizard on that rock, he's on that rock and he lives there and he'll be there tomorrow at two as well. Everything is consistent like a clock. So we have to kind of pull ourselves out of the man made contrived reality, which is basically chaos, and start to listen to the root power of nature and then coexist. The journey around the sun will introduce you to that. The journey around the clock. Hey, you know, what are we doing? We're moving in with bladder now. We're going into the water energy. There's correct behavior for this. Then we're going to get into, you know, each time of the day has a different effect on your body, you know, your bio clock. That's why when you travel, you travel and now you can't evacuate your bowels for two days and you can't sleep and you're a mess because you're still on this clock. Guess what? There's points you can hit before you even go there saying, guess what? It's going to be six o'clock when I get there. Tell your body at six o'clock before you get there. There's all kinds of techniques we can show you to reset your bio clock, to coexist with where you are on the planet at that time. Or suffer. The older you get, the longer it takes to reset your timing belt. So we introduce you to basically the time, your life, the season, right? And the time of day. All of these things, the hour, time, season, and hour. That is what the journey around the sun reveals. And it takes one year just to see it and then up to seven years to become it. I have clients that have been with us here, by God, for a long time now. You know, I've got clients I've been training for 20 years. And so, because what are you going to do? You just keep doing it. That's life. When are you going to stop eating? When are you going to stop, you know, sleeping? And so the first step is understanding this basic information that nobody was taught as a child. You know, the fundamental... <laughs> They call it defining reality. And so the journey around the sun is designed to do just that. It takes 12 months to visit all of those five main teachings. 
and then uh, a 24 hour cycle for your body to experience, you know, through the, what they call the meridian cycle as well. It's a very interesting thing. Uh, the human body is an amazing thing, you know, and guess what? Every time you learn something, you get rewarded with dopamine. You know, it's your responsibility to stalk growth. And if you can't grow physically anymore and you're not going to be doing 108 push-ups and backflips, your mind can grow. And if the mind keeps growing, the inspiration stays there. So by observing the behavior of nature and coexisting within it, you get rewarded. And that's really what the journey around the sun is. And we've been doing it here with great results. This isn't like, I got an idea. I've been doing this with, for decades and seen thousands now. People go through this process regardless of what their starting point was and benefit. So that's basically, you know, my recap. Now, what I will do, who here is not a member of the program? Who's not a member? So if you're not a member and you want to be a member, what I'm going to do is, which is almost going to be impossible, is if you enroll, yes, there's more, right? It's my <laughs> sales thing, right? You're going to get a blender. No. <laughs> right? <laughs> and a new car. No. But if you do, I'll take you through your, normally what we do is we take you through your five element assessment. And when you do our, our, like our teacher training program and things like that. But if you're really interested and you want to know your constitution and you want to know your four pillars and you want to know your body type and you want to know exactly what season you are and what the right behavior is, we'll take you through it. You'll have to fill out a whole thing and then I'll sit down with you and take you through it and get you like you go to the mall and it's the, you are here. You know, I am here and I want to be here. So you have a better chance of finding Radio Shack if you know where the hell you are in the mall. And so that's why we do the Constitution. So I offer that to you as an you know, incentive because you heard all of this stuff. So there's a part of your brain that wants to do it. So now I have to give you, you know, enough motivation to bring your body with. That's that jar of phlegm part, you know, where you actually have to show up. If I can just take a check for a really large amount of money and slap you in the forehead and you had it all, I'd do it. But I can't. You actually have to go through this process. We have five minutes. Does anyone else have any questions about anything that I said? Would you like me to clarify? Yes, ma'am. We have it in a book. As a matter of fact, I have that whole process in a book and we just upgraded it. And I'm sh We have it available out front in a uh, 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 USB drive, bloop, goes right in your computer. It's the whole book and all the videos of this whole journey around the sun. Okay, then we have a book too. I have a stone tablet too, if you really, if you really wanna, I actually put it on stone. So, so good, so that's great. Anybody else have any questions? What a great group, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Correct. Right? That's a really good question. So the question was, hey, you know what? It is, and it does feel like spring right here, doesn't it? Doesn't feel like that in Minnesota, though. You know, it's like, wait a minute. It's not. So yes, a couple of things. One, it has more to do with the planet in relation to the sun than it really does the weather. Because inside the planet, it's responding. So there's like a Wi-Fi, if you will, message going through the whole planet. And everything in the dirt, even if it's covered with snow, is experiencing what they call the arousal of thunder. The amended soil is getting everything excited, and it wants to go like this. And if you look at even the trees, they're going to, like the trees, belong to wood, and sap will start running. Right? That's why you don't cut trees in the winter. They're brittle. You're like a tree. So it really doesn't matter. You see, on that level, but on an acute day-to-day -day level, so the external though might be there. So just because it's spring and you happen to be in Minnesota or North Dakota or some horrible place, you're probably not going to be walking around with yellow shorts on and flip-flops. <laughs> you, you see, so you still have to, the daily behavior, right, day, see, right, month and period of your life would still have to fit by that. Does that help? Yeah, good question. Any other questions? Okay, well, like I said, we have all kinds of incentives to get you in the game here. So if you want to enroll, I'll be happy to take you through 
we'll make an appointment. I'll take you through your constitution and uh, whatever other things we have in our books and stuff. Is there anything else? Okay, I really appreciate you taking the time and uh, outstanding group, everybody.